1010 is the day that Elon is going to change the world forever. <laughs> nah, let's get real. If you want a video like that, there are plenty of other Tesla fans out there. Before the RoboTaxi event, I wanted to put a realistic view together, assessing the current state of autonomy and to point out the many reasons why Tesla has become a follower, not a leader. If you want to call me a player hater, that's fine, but I'm just trying to be realistic. Tesla has some great technology, but they're not the only one. Hey, 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 hey. Who talks the most about autonomy? Elon does. Who's doing the most with autonomy? In the US, we have Waymo, Zooks, Cruise, May Mobility, Motional, and I'll talk about WeRide later. In California, the Public Utilities Commission, why it's that agency, I'm not sure, they have issued driverless permits to a number of companies, but not Tesla. Testing in California puts it close to the people developing these advanced systems, but it comes at a cost that Elon may not want to pay. Data. Companies operating a fleet are required to provide basic data to the state for things like the number of rides given and the number of accidents. And that information gets made public. They sometimes claim confidentiality to prevent it from getting out, but overall, there's a lot more transparency there than in other states. Arizona has less paperwork, but you still need to contact the state's DOT to submit your requests. These are the companies who have done that. Still no Tesla. Being on this list does not mean they are all actively testing. Too Simple, for example, has largely given up on developing autonomous trucks in the US. They've regrouped to focus on China. Business-friendly Texas is super easy for now. Austin is a popular testing location, and its residents are starting to sound like the people in San Francisco, wondering if more needs to be done to regulate driverless robo-taxis. Texas state lawmakers are currently looking to revamp their laws to address some of these concerns, or, or maybe to add more loopholes for Tesla, yeah, you know, you know what? That's what's going to happen. I wrote in the May Mobility Van, the word I would use to describe that system is safe. I wrote in the Waymo, that system I would describe as confident. Admittedly, I've not driven the latest versions of FSD, but in my past experience, I would describe that system with one word, nervous. Now, there are plenty of videos online of owners documenting their experiences and having really good results. Tesla promises to do more than other companies, but they have a history of overpromising and under-delivering. Hey, 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 hey. Here's a useful chart to print out and laminate. The Society of Automotive Engineers have defined six levels of autonomy. Zero is nothing. Level five is a fully autonomous vehicle that can go anywhere by itself. No need for a steering wheel or pedals. The AVs I mentioned earlier are operating at level four, which limits where and under what conditions they can operate under. For example, geofencing the vehicles so that they only operate in a designated area that has been mapped in detail or not going on the highway. Tesla's current state-of-the-art is SAE Level 2 Plus, which doesn't appear on the chart. It's a term that was invented outside of SAE, but it's widely accepted within the industry, meaning you can take your hands off the wheel, but the system monitors you to make sure you're kind of paying attention. Rumors are that Elon demanded no steering wheel, no pedals for the robo-taxi, forcing it to SAE Level 5. It's almost a given that Elon will make promises about delivering actual full self-driving in China, and they're making progress towards offering the version available in the U.S. today. But it's complicated, not easy. The industry is headed towards bifurcation of autonomous driving technology. In the one corner, you have autonomous systems developed in China for China. And then you have systems for the rest of the world, including the U.S. This was already happening before the Biden administration proposed a ban on Chinese and Russian location technologies in vehicles. The rules are not written, but the proposal spells out the intention. 
It seeks to ban vehicle connectivity systems from beaming data to and from vehicles because once the data is sent off the vehicle, who knows what will happen to it? And digital packets sent to the vehicle could be engineered to do bad things. It also seeks to prevent autonomous driving systems from gathering advanced location data from U.S. roads, communities, and more sensitive areas. Fact is, China does this to Western companies today. Tesla has been struggling to get approval for its current FSD in China. Elon already had to make trips to ask permission and put safeguards in place to prevent data on Chinese roads from coming to America. For years, if you wanted to develop a navigation system for use in Chinese automobiles, all the work had to be done in China. You cannot share detailed map and location information outside of the country. And look, I don't hate them for that. It's their own national security. Chinese automotive vehicle companies include new energy vehicle manufacturers like Neo, Xpeng, and Xiaomi, and you have other tech companies, big companies like Baidu and Huawei, smaller companies like Pony AI, AutoX, and WeRide. Let's talk about those last two companies. Both started in Silicon Valley, and now they operate in China and in other countries. They and Tesla are going to have to navigate the difficulty of current Chinese regulations and proposed U.S. regulations. I don't care who wins the election. Some form of vehicle data protection law will be coming for national security purposes. If Elon says he has it all worked out, with all the various governments, don't believe the hype. Hey, 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 hey. Elon has a long, a very long history of past promises. In 2014, he said self driving cars were six years away. Okay. A year later, he accelerated that to only two years away. In 2017, he said their cars now have all the computing hardware and sensors needed to achieve level five full autonomy. It's just a software that left and that would be easy. And since 2018 onward, autonomy has constantly been just a few months away. At the event, he's sure to make promises about launching robo taxis and the alternative model where people offer their own cars on a Tesla platform, the so-called Airbnb model. Listen to his words and you can decide to believe it or not. I doubt there will be any Q&A at the event, but someone has to ask, why is it so small? Other autonomous vehicles are based on comfortable minivans and SUVs, then moving towards purpose-built shuttles that can carry four people or more. It would seem like the key customer requirements for a robo-taxi would be roomy, comfortable, good entry egress, plus space for luggage and bags, Accommodating people in wheelchairs and with service dogs would also be nice. All indications are that Tesla is going with a two-passenger pod, I guess that's what you would call it. This is the same basic concept as outlined in the book by Walter Isaacson. Their thinking was different, the key attributes being low cost, smaller than the Model 3, super high volume. These requirements would push it to look like something more like this. If you have more than two passengers, then I guess you take multiple robo-taxis. If you have a service animal, you could tie it to the bumper. And babies? Uh, yes. Yes, Elon loves babies. Hey, 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 hey. I personally believe that FSD Hardware 3 is not capable of full autonomous driving, regardless of the software. I don't think the cameras are good enough to distinguish different objects in all conditions. In an earnings call earlier this year, Elon said they would bifurcate hardware 3 and hardware 4 training, meaning development of the software could go down different paths because hardware 4 gathers much higher quality images and has more processing capabilities. The results of this are predictable. Hardware 4 will make more progress than Hardware 3, and eventually they will slow, then stop making Hardware 3 any better. That's completely understandable. But if he teases a Hardware 5, people should not jump for joy. Rather, it's a sign that Hardware 4 probably can't hack it either. 
The compute module in earlier vehicles can be swapped out, sure, but swapping out the camera starts to be very unlikely. Basically, all the other AVs on the road today utilize a suite of sensors, including high-definition cameras, radar, and LiDAR. Meanwhile, Elon has said it once. He'll continue to say it. What we're going to explain to you today is that LiDAR is, is a fool's errand. And, any, and anyone relying on LiDAR is doomed. <laughs> doomed. Now, some EVs in China are starting to offer vision-only system for driver assistance, level 2 and level 2 plus. But to achieve full autonomy, most everyone else is still going with more sensors and more advanced sensors. So Tesla will show us some robo-taxis, make claims about when to expect actual full self-driving, and the stock bros will scream to the moon. Elon Musk has given us lots of reasons to be skeptical about what gets promised at the robo-taxi event, but none of that will matter. Millions of people still love everything Tesla does, and I do not hate that. I don't. I want Tesla to succeed, and I marvel at the devotion of Elon's followers. I hate you. I hate you. I don't even know you, and I hate your guts. I hope all the bad things in life happen to you and nobody else but you.